To make our directional blur, we're going to start off by coming up to the objects panel and I'm going to add a pulse effect and I'm just going to add the Gaussian blur one. And so once it's added, we are going to uh, create our own empty material down here in the resources panel. And then uh, if you still have this Gaussian blur pulse effect here selected, you can actually swap out the material. So I'm just going to grab my empty material and drag it over. And now we can start making our own blur effect. So go ahead and double click on your empty material to open up the material editor. And let's just kind of clear this out. And you can see we just have this simple shader here. So to create our directional blur, it's actually super easy. I'm going to click on this plus button or you can right click. I'm going to search for directional blur. I'll select that. I'll add that in. And then we need to attach something to our texture. So I'm going to add a node. We can search for texture. I don't want texture 2D parameter. I want the texture 2D object parameter. So I'll add that. We'll connect it. And now we have this custom map here we can choose. So I'll click on this and I'll just go ahead and choose device camera texture. And you can see we get this directional blur effect. Now we can change the angle and the strength. Uh, so if we want to, I'm going to drag this out and add a float parameter. And let's just call that angle. We'll enable min, enable max, and our max, let's say 360 degrees. So now I can click this to kind of adjust that angle. So you can see that kind of rotating around. And then we can do the same thing for the strength if we want. Now, one thing you might have noticed as I was adjusting this angle is that we kind of get this repetition on the edges uh, because essentially it's just kind of like creating copies of this texture and uh, blending it all together, create the blur. So at the edges, it doesn't know what to grab. So it just kind of repeats at the other end of the image, kind of like a Mario game where you can go off one side, come back the other side. Uh, so if you don't want this, instead of applying our material as a post effect, let's go ahead and disable this. I'm going to add a screen image. So I'll add a screen image and then I'll just put on my material and I'll change the stretch mode to stretch. And we have our directional blur back. Uh, we still have this kind of repeating part. So all I'm going to do is come into my scene here. I'm going to scale this image. Now, if I click and drag, you can see that it gets distorted. So instead, if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then click and drag, it'll lock the aspect ratio. So I'm just going to scale that up a little bit then drag it down so it's centered again. And now you can see that we get our directional blur. But now since I've scaled this, we're cutting off that kind of repeated part. Now, let's say you want to add like a post effect to this. So if I come into my camera, I can add, uh, let's add a color correction. Uh, let's choose heat. Now I'll add that. You can see here what that's supposed to look like, but we don't see anything over here. That's because on our material, we're using the device camera texture. So it's not even looking at our camera here. So all we need to do is click on here. I'm going to add a new texture and choose the screen texture. This will grab everything that's previously been drawn to our lens and include it as input to our material. So if I do the screen texture, you can now see my post effect. Uh, that color correction is applied on top of my directional blur. Uh, now, if you want to add something like a like the VHS effect, if we were to just add that in my camera, that's going to end up being blurred as well. So I've added this VHS post effect, and you can see that it's being affected by that blur. So if we want that to be on top of our blur, we can actually just kind of change the ordering of our cameras. So I'm going to pull this camera down here. And then in my scene config, I want to make sure that it comes after the orthographic camera. Uh, so once we've done that, you can see we have our directional blur, we have our post effect, and now we have that nice crisp line of that VHS effect. Now our last piece of customization, it might be a little hard to see, but you can kind of see some banding. You can see distinct copies of our user here. And that's just how the blur is working. So I'm going to come back to the material editor in my uh, directional blur material. Uh, let's go ahead and close that for a second. So there's nothing here to really customize to get rid of those lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our directional blur node. Now it'll take us into the material nodes 
that are actually doing the directional blur. If we want to get back out, we just click on our material title again. So we're going to come into here and it's doing this loop. So it's kind of looping over the texture to create copies of it. So we're going to come over here. Uh, we can see a loop count and there's nothing we can configure there. But here at this loop right here, it says 15 X. So this loop is running 15 times. So I'm going to click this little arrow to get this little side panel back out. And if I want to smooth it out, I can just increase this number. If we go up to say 30, uh, we're going to get a smoother blur and we might need to adjust the strength as we adjust this, but you can see that we still have kind of that banding, but it is um, starting to kind of run together. So if I come back to my um, blur material, let's adjust that strength a little bit. Let's take it back down. Now you can see it's a much smoother effect. So if you're not happy with how jagged it is, just click into here, find this loop, change the iterations, and then adjust the strength to kind of compensate if it stretches out too much. And there you have it. That is how you create a directional blur in Lens Studio. Uh, the only other thing I would recommend is um, naming your material something better than empty material, name it like directional blur. Uh, but there you go.